Welcome to Creatively Exposed, a podcast and safe space for Black and marginalized creatives to empower, educate, and uplift you through the final product of self and creation. Bring a homie, share with a homie, and enjoy the show. Welcome back to Creatively Exposed and Let's see if we can make this a mini episode because it is a late night and today went by so quickly. What is time? What is time? So I just want to talk about this really cool event that I was um, invited to, part of, you know, being Voodoo Not alum. I'll probably keep talking about that until, you know, the next year's version workshop um so if you haven't heard my previous episodes about voodoo knots it is the black is king episode which people apparently have listened to a lot which i am so grateful voodoo knots is a an afrofuturism black writers workshop um capital b on the black And so there was this dope opportunity. My biggest thing is um, kind of the liberation of women. And the conversation is called The Rebuilding Women-Led Peace Building. And what it was, it was really neat. Um, It started out with conversations honoring um, the indigenous Wow. The indigenous lands that we live on and all of the places that we have been. And then it goes into a game. So we were talking about rematriization, which is the opposite of dealing with the patriarchy. And so what a concept. Um... I was invited by Audrey Williams, who is a co-creative director um, in Ancestral Futures, at Ancestral Futures, um, and it's just dope, like, overall, the whole thing, like, anyone who knows me personally knows this is my jam, and so basically what it is, is what would a world look like? Oh, here's a question. Um, there are a few nonprofits that are looking to come up with community-based strategies to rematriate the future, specifically the future of peace building. And what does that look like from a feminist global citizen lens? And so the game is called Afro Rhythms, which is pretty dope. I'll put in the link in the show notes of just more information about this world building. And this is basically discussions on formulating this world. And in the game, there's options where I think the first thing is um, they'll provide, in our case, it's like what more or less peace negotiations look what would that look like and then we and more or less liberation right so these are the general themes then you pick a random thing and so we started out with like there's jobs and bracelets and films and different thing but like afrofuturistic like what could it have that could further peace building and further liberation, how could it also be oppressive to this thing? And so one of the ideas in the in the game um, that I brought up was kind of like a crystal that kind of amplifies healing. And it took a whole turn, like it turned into, you know, um, uh, like a magical mood ring or um, a stabilizer of emotions in order to be able to further peace build. Like that's the concept and for me this blows my mind because like to be a part of creating this future world that I would like to live in um 
That's an honor. And it's it's also mind blowing because creativity is envisioning something that may exist, but not in the way that you see that it should exist, right? And so imagine a life of equity and freedom and a place where everyone can coexist without oppression and the suffering just because you are who you are, you know? And so we spoke with elders, um, the babies are talking and telling all of the truths. It's fascinating to have these conversations with like-minded people, but also people from different parts of the world and see what what healing a healing life would look like when the patriarchy is not at the head of the table. I mean, we've seen the results of it in in my opinion. It hasn't been very successful. So I also feel like rematrization is the way I will start talking about things. Um the process of versus the continual main focus of what we got going on now. Overall, this conversation was so invigorating and dope, and it felt like in addition to formulating the world um, through the ab- abolitionist lens and also picturing what could be. Um, I remember from Voodoo Knots where someone said that, I feel like it was Shanghai, um, we've already, as Black people, gone through the apocalypse. I mean, being taken from our homes, forced to live under circumstances that never made sense being treated as objects versus humans, genocide, etc. And so that's really heavy, but like this is our re- our reality. Like this is where that's part of where we come from and and in order for us to have gotten this far, our ancestors had to believe in an afrofuturistic kind of way of a world where there's freedom to an extent, there's a type of liberation, you know, I am Afrofuturism for those before me. And so those after me will be the future. And so what would I want their future to be like? And so like that, like, I don't know about you, but that takes my brain and it's just like, that's the sound of an explosion. That was, that was my Saturday. Y'all, like, that game was so lit. Like, I, 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 this is the type of games that I like to play. Like, let's, let's, let's picture life and let's go all the way. You know, um, an, a cloak, an amplification cloak, I think was one of the examples in, um, the case study of this atro- Afro rhythm game. And so I'll definitely put it down. I'll put down um, those who created the conversation. They're looking for creatives to assist in what's going on in um, La Jordan. And it's just assisting the theater, the theater, um, the theater community, because that's the artistic community, and it got blown up. And so that's the next conversation. They have it every Saturday around 2 p.m. Eastern Standard, 10-ish PST. Don't quote me on that. So I just, I found something cool that speaks to my soul, and I hope that if it if it calls you, you know, join in the conversation. 
I'll definitely put in more info. Oh, no, it's not Jordan. I'm sorry. It's Lebanon. Yeah, it's Lebanon. Um, yeah, sorry. It's one of the ladies is her mom was in from Jordan or she was in Jordan. I think that's why I confused the two. So apologies on that. But the next conversation will be poetry, probably singing, all kinds of different things. I don't know if I'll make it, but I hope to. So that was my Saturday, which was really, really cool. And um, I am in a new venture, right? I'm creating this new space for myself um, on an entrepreneurial level and working on the boutique, astrolizasix.com. And so, wow. Like, I'm going to put you on the game. TikTok is the place for small businesses, at least for however long that that lasts. Um, there's like a way to find the hashtag. Do that, do that, do that. Uh, creating an online boutique is complicated. It is also stressful and tiring. Like, I feel like I'm writing another book. <laughs> That's the feeling that I have. Um, it can cause anxiety. It can cause stress. Uh, not knowing what you're doing and using, you know, the U of the tube and the tick of the talk in order to figure stuff out. Uh, but it's also rewarding when anyone supports it. I... I'm excited for this new chapter. Excuse me, I'll be drinking water. It is it is almost midnight. One minute till midnight. So I say that to say this, and maybe this will literally be a very small mini-sode. Um, the next two episodes will be interviews for sure. I ain't playing no more. Uh, having, creating anything... And putting yourself out there is no small feat. Like, I feel like I've said this more than once, but sometimes I don't give myself enough credit, even when other people do, because it's like, yeah, but I'm not here or I'm not this, but like, yo, you're doing the thing. And even if you're not doing the thing and you have the idea, And you're going to put the plan into motion. Like, you're still doing the thing. We're literally creating spaces to validate our existence. Because am I this big CEO, entrepreneur for 30 years? No, but time will still pass. And I can learn as I wing it because, you know, things look easy from the outside, but most of the time I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just figuring it out as I go. And I think that's part of the thing where sometimes perfectionism ruins the ability to see how capable you are of excelling. You know why? Because it has to be this certain way. And what does that do? It leads to procrastinating. It leads to taking a nap instead. And I'm talking about myself. It leads to being so stressed that you do absolutely nothing. It leads to over-researching to the point that it's six years later, you done got all this information, you still haven't done that one thing. And it's like, jump in. Grab a little parachute on the way and build your plane. If you hit flat, you can get back up because this is the cartoon version, okay? This is Looney Tunes version. You fall off the little cliff You thought you were going to fly, you get right back up like coyote, and you try again. 
maybe this time you won't use a mallet. You'll use, I don't know, an anvil. I don't know. We're going deep into metaphors.